I don't intend to be in this thing the rest of my life. This was the best reveal we could have got. Uh, Sackhead Jason just, he goes too crazy. Little bro, you got it. You got it. You got it. that shit. <laughs> he ain't trying to deal with all that. Our best girl Alice returns for her sequel film as our surviving protagonist. We get a peek into her civilian life as she dreams about my last video and wonders why it only got 12 views and 2 likes. Perfect. And for some reason she looks like she's from the Dr. Seuss verse. Jason one shots <clears throat> our best girl after she discovers his mother chilling with the grapes. I don't know why the filmmakers thought it was okay to put her in the dirt 6 seconds into the film, but I guess I gotta allow it. A new era of counselors are brought into Pagonek Lodge, and I didn't expect to like them as much as the OG crew, but I can say with the utmost confidence that this film uses its characters far better. Our new crew includes, but it's not limited to, Wonder Cheeks, Clark Kent, Hot Wheels, Skinny Pete, The Time Travelers, Hansel and Gretel, White Rice, Red Beans and Rice, Fred from Scooby Doo, and Jenny, just Jenny. These characters act like actual young adults. They interact and have chemistry with one another. They possess hopes and dreams. I wanted all of them to succeed. Clark Kent was supposed to get them titties. Hot Wheels was supposed to retire his wheelchair and settle down with Hannah Baker, even though that wasn't the case. Hansel and Greta were the only dumb characters, but they're not from this time period, so I guess it's fine. This is one of my favorite shots in the entire film. Get low, get low, get low, get low. Campus security pulls up to Sackboy's house, but unfortunately, Jason wasn't ready for company. Mm. Wonder Cheeks decides to get the boys. What well, we've all been waiting for. Perfect. Jason one shots Hot Wheels before the biggest night of his life, sending him tumbling into oblivion. We get an immaculate shot of pure tension before Jason gets a, a two for one, sending the time travelers back to their century. This was the best reveal we could have got. Uh. Sackhead Jason just, he goes too crazy. You see old dude just chilling on the wall? Uh. Not to compare them, but I'm sure our protagonist would be pleased to see this display of competence this is the most michael myers jason ever was i love it easily the best sequence in the entire movie but this sequence this was good too though Paul, there's someone in this room Sackhead Jason is probably the most unique and underrated Jason design ever. It's like the Tasm one suit of Jason's. It's so good. Perfect. Jason, he's at this point in the film, this is when he decides to just, he lets loose. He goes crazy. You cannot tame this man. He's putting on four star pay per views with his co stars. He's bursting through windows. He equipped a fucking a pitchfork out of thin air and started smashing. He smacked down doors with that motherfucker. He's showing his speed. He's utterly unstoppable, which is why I always use him when I play Friday the game. Man, this man, all the traps. He's just He's so good. Jenny one taps Jason and he sells it like he's Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan. This sequence is so underlooked. Jason just shifted, but he overgunned it, so he missed. But Jenny manages to also disappear through the blink of an eye. Look, I like Alice. I liked Alice last film. She was cool. She's still the reigning one shot queen, but nah, this girl Jenny, she just got that dog in her. She a little bit different. She locked in and she bricked up. This is also one of my favorite shots. Jason decided to teleport on top of a chair, you know, so he could get the drop on Jenny. Yeah, but he just ends up falling on his ass. They eventually engage in an extreme rules match that I guess Jason didn't know he signed up for. Hello, guys? I didn't sign up for a cage match. Hey, unlock the thing. <laughs> Look at him. Hey, bitch, what you doing? Hey, watch it. Hey, little bro, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> He ain't trying to deal with all that. Jenny then breaks a chair on him like his fucking WrestleMania 22. Jenny goes on to make the characters of Halloween Kills look like the dumbest mammals on earth. As in this scene, she has one of the most single greatest displays of competence and savagery ever. She decides to cosplay as Jason's dead mother. You know, in order to, you know, order him around, you know, wash the dishes and do other unnecessary rudimentary household tasks. And he's listening at first, but then I love how Jason was going to just one shot his mama anyway. Just for the hell of it, just you know, uh, I guess I don't want to do that shit. And then, <laughs> and that one good eye that he has sticking out was such a genius design choice. I love that. Perfect. Jason realizes that he's been deceived after he discovers that his mother is still in the grave. Fred comes out of nowhere after he most certainly died earlier. Jenny slows down time just like Alice did last movie, which is a power, I guess. These female protagonists sharing his franchise, and she proceeds to smack Jason with the force of Nakato Avocado. Perfect. They did an awful job with these counselors i made mean, absolutely terrible in both films you 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 gotta watch these kids
kids. I don't know what the hell you thought was gonna happen. Goofy as hell. I failed to mention, but you know, Muffin the dog, it was the dog in this movie. He returns after we thought he got sent to the pet cemetery. And another beautiful score by Harry Manfredini starts playing. It's not nowhere as good as the one we got in the last film, but it's still good. It's okay. Jason then jump scares the audience in the filmmakers and he takes Jenny with him. But really, the only thing scary about this is that nigga got a full beard. What the hell? But it all turns out to have not happened, but it did. You know, that's Jason's signature. He loves to pull women places. He just, he don't really take them over. What the hell? Goofy as hell. What is you doing? This movie was better than I thought, too. I don't know what it was, but the plays on the camera are just as good as the last movie. The tense and beautiful soundtrack by Harry Manfredini was still as effective, even though I'm pissed that they didn't use the inner score from the last movie. The EDP 456 POV shots are back, Perfect. and the characters are far better than they were last film. I'm going to get Friday the 13th, part two. I'm gonna get this shit a 6 out of 10, a C plus. It's, it's really good. I liked it. It improved on the premise film in every way possible. The series is getting better. It's getting up there. I mean, so yeah, both films so far are more competent than Halloween Kills. And Wonder Cheeks never died because off-screen deaths don't count. She's our true protagonist. She did it for the boys. Perfect. 10 out of 10, GG, don't Not add me. Bust. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go back and watch my part one review. I know you didn't see it. It only got 200 views. I know. Go back and watch it. And I'll be looking for part three next week. I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Perfect.